One of the most unique aspects of this particular project is uh, the rotating nacelles. And those are going to rotate you know, from horizontal to vertical, uh, from forward flight to vertical flight. And, you know, like many aspects of this project, uh, I started off with an idea and it kind of uh, grew uh, through iteration um, into a much better plan. Uh, this is the first version of the nacelle. And um, to basically the way this works, we have a motor mounted here on a firewall in the front. And this particular version had an air inlet here and an exhaust back here for cooling because I had intended to put the ESC uh, in here as well. Um, I figured it was a great opportunity for keeping, uh, keeping the ESC cool. Uh, there is a top half and a bottom half to the nacelle and this is a 12 millimeter outside diameter carbon fiber tube. And uh, if you've seen in the previous videos, this carbon fiber tube is mounted in the end of the wing. And this really is the mounting point and pivot point for the nacelles. Um, I'll go ahead and pop the top off here and we can take a look inside. So, so what we're seeing here is uh, the inside. We've got a servo here and this is a uh, 12 gram uh, Emax ES08 MA servo. Uh, which is a, a 12 gram analog servo um, and these have been rock solid i've used these on a lot of different builds uh, wings and planes um, 28 to 30 inch 35 inch wings these work great um, they're 1.6 kilogram centimeter uh, torque so they're pretty torquey uh, very light like i said 12 grams and they've been great um, so uh, that's attached to the drive gear here, which is a printed gear. And, and these two screw holes actually screw uh, a, a very small flathead screw screw into a servo horn. So I'm getting that nylon servo horn that uh, you know, specifically fits the, the gears on the end of that servo. And then that gear uh, meshes here with the idler gear. And this idler gear is actually... Um, fitted to the end of the carbon fiber rod or tube. So this gear doesn't turn at all. And essentially what happens is as the servo turns, it just spins itself around um, this passive gear. Um, this is a 12 millimeter needle bearing. So this bearing rides around the outside of the carbon fiber tube, which gives us a nice uh, smooth um, action without binding and then there are a couple of um, printed spacers in here as well now this setup worked great uh, once I printed it all out the problem was that it is extremely heavy this is uh, I believe 50 grams and 50 grams is about half the weight of the entire wing itself so uh, this definitely was too heavy so I decided to go to a version 2, and this is the version 2. And as you can see, we've got a sleeker nacelle design, and we don't have the cooling or the, cool, the, uh, the air inlet or outlet here. And that's because I found that doing some research that it's better to have the longer motor wires than the battery wires. So what I've decided to do is use a 4-in-1 ESC uh, located in the fuselage and just run the motor wires out here. Um, and we're looking at three motor wires as opposed to two battery wires plus the control wires coming out. So as far as wires, I think it's pretty much a wash. It does move some weight centrally uh, back into the um, back into the fuselage so we don't have as much weight out here on the wingtips. So maybe we'll have a little bit better response and roll rate. Again, weight became an issue. Uh, this ended up being, I think, 45 grams. So, you know, better, but not great. So I was uh, discussing this with a buddy of mine and he suggested doing a 
um, a frame and fairing type design instead of an all-in-one design. So basically, we would have a, um, a rigid frame for holding the all the components, the structural components, and then an aer a thin aerodynamic fairing. And that's what this version 3 is. Um, this has a top and bottom fairing, and the nice thing about these fairings, um, i turn the top off here, on the bottom, is that um, they can be very lightweight because they're non-structural, and I don't have to deal with them right now. Um, because I really don't need them for vertical flight testing or, or even horizontal flight testing until we're really pushing for uh, efficiency. So they could be made out of uh, a single wall print, very light print, or I could use, um, I could even use vacuform Lexan or, you know, a, a thin one or two layer fiberglass fairing. So uh, it's just, just for aerodynamics. Um, so we take a look at this. We've got the motor mounted on the front. If I shut the motor off, we've got um, the same gear set up in here. Um, we've got the firewall on the front, which is a separate piece. And the firewall is actually um, mounted through these four holes. So basically what we have here are a top and a bottom half, which is really nice because it makes it easy to print. You know, we've got a flat surface that I can put on the on the printer plate, and um, so it makes it very easy to print. And then the bolts, uh, motor bolts, will come through the frame here, and into the through the firewall and into the motor, and that gives me the firewall and it bolts it on, makes a very rigid connection between the two halves of the plate here. And we've got the a carbon fiber tube. The other thing you'll notice is that I have brought the motor and the gears towards the center of the nacelle, and that was to minimize uh, the wing section that's here and shed a lot more weight. And originally I had a larger wing section because I wanted the thrust of the motor to act along parallel to the cord when these motors were were in the vertical position rather than being uh, that thrust coming down perpendicular to the cord and hitting the flat surface top of the wing and losing a bunch of, of efficiency there. But what I found was um, during testing that it really didn't make that big a difference. Uh, vertical thrust is really not an issue with this. The motors and prop setup are more than capable. So. I shortened that up a little bit. That shed some more weight. Um, so basically we have a top and a bottom here. And if I shut the top off, you'll see that we have the same uh, ES08 servo and the drive gear, the idler gear, the needle bearing, and the two wool printed washers. Um, the structure is kind of a trust structure here. The Outside piece here has a flange, so I has kind of a stiffener flange along it. And by itself, it's very light, but not very strong. Um, when we throw on the top section and then screw them together, if you look here on the bottom, we've got uh, a screw, two small screws, and these are 10 millimeter long. Um, two millimeter flathead screws and they screw in and this is on either side of the bearing so that secures our pivot and then this point down here the screw really holds the back structure together and then what I'm doing is using three very small these are five or six millimeter long uh, two millimeter flathead screws that screw the top and the bottom, join the top and the bottom, and really make this act as though it's one piece. Um, and I'm amazed at how rigid this is once it's assembled. But this section here, the, all of the printed uh, piece here, is about 17 grams. So we've gone from 50 grams down to 17 grams, and I'm 
you know, couldn't be happier with the way this has worked out. Um, like I said, it prints very easily, um, assembles very easily. So one thing you'll notice here is this piece on the end, this grommet is actually a TPU grommet so that the wires, when the, the wires from the servo and the motor wire come in here, down through this carbon fiber tube, they're protected from the end of the carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber is not uh, cutting any of the insulation with this uh, TPU grommet. And then these posts here are just so that we have some place to mount the fairings in the future when I pull that design together and figure out what I'm actually going to do. So, um, I'm really happy with the way this has come out and we'll head down to the shop take a look at how these uh, how these go together and all the components and uh, and actually how they work okay so we're back down in the shop now and um, I'll just show you where we are with the nacelles. This is the version one nacelle that I showed you uh, upstairs on the computer. And this has, whoop, there's the firewall. And uh, I broke the cooling duct, trying to get all the supports out. But this was the first version. Um, pretty heavy, a lot bigger than it needed to be considering the size motor I was running. So 50 grams, not bad for a first try. This is the version two. You can see it's much more slender nacelle. Um, this is the firewall, much smaller firewall, and then all the cutouts and the brackets and everything for um, holding all of the bearings and pieces inside. But again, uh, only lost five grams, so this is down to 45 grams. So this is the version 3, and uh, it's the current version. I won't say it's the last version, but it is the current version, and this is how I printed them. Um, I'm using a brim around it just because I don't want them lifting at all. And this is just uh, a Hatchbox uh, PLA. I like this gray because it actually matches the, the primer pretty well that I'm using on the wings. So. Pretty happy with that. And this uh, this just came off the printer. This is actually for the rear wing. So the rear and the front and rear wings were at different angles of incidence. So the motor mounts uh, are printed slightly different. That angle of incidence is taken into account. So if we take a look at, uh, this is the other one. I just pulled the flash off it. You can see that we have the carbon fiber tube. I don't have the gears in this, but I'll show you on the front wing, the gears. But again, these are just very small screws. This is a, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's the 10 millimeter um, long, two millimeter flathead screw. And then out here in the, in the webbing, we've got these small ones. So yeah, that's a six millimeter long screw. So there's three of those in there plus three of those bigger ones. So they're not adding much weight. And then we can take the firewall off. It's a tight fit. There, now there's the firewall. That's a little notch here for bringing the, the motor wires down and inside the nacelle. Pop this open. If I can pop it open without breaking it here. There we go. I think this one really hasn't been fitted yet because I just pulled it off of the printer. So there's a fair amount of cleanup that goes into it. All right, so there's our carbon fiber tube. This is the needle bearing. Ah, there it is. So that's just a, a needle bearing. You can see the the needles inside, little rollers. 
I picked these up on Amazon. I forget what they were. They were, uh, I think they're 16, 16 millimeters on the outside, 12 millimeters on the inside, and 10 millimeters thick. And they were, uh, I don't know, $12 for five of them or something. They weren't very expensive. Um, so you can see the structure here. This is the servo. This is the Emacs servo I talked about. And this has a cutout for the servo and a small trace along the back here for the servo wire to come back around. And then a slot for the bearing to go in and then some cutouts uh, for the printed washers, thrust washers that I put on there just to tighten everything up. Um, and there's the, there's the top part. Where's that the bottom part? Yeah, so this is the top, doesn't have the screw holes, and the bottom has the screw holes in it. So, all in all, pretty happy. Um, they're light, and when they're, like I said, when they're screwed together, they're very strong um, in any of the axes anyways that it needs the strength. Okay, so let's take a look at what those look like on the wing. So this is the front wing where I have uh, that out of the way. This is the front wing. I have all the wires. I have a receiver on the back here because I was running some testing. Um, so I have my, this is the front wing's pretty much complete. I've got the elevators on here. And then you can see the, the motor. Uh, these are seven by four or five HQ props. And like I said before, when this rotates, it rotates about this center idler gear and then the drive gear just kind of spins around it. Works really well, pretty precise. They're holding well, so I'm happy with that. You can see the, the TPU grommet in here. We've got the bolts through. The motor bolts go through the frame, through the firewall, and into the back of the motor. And right now I am running, these are iFlight um, 2506 1650 kV. Going to be on 4S with a 7x45 prop. And so far, I think that's, uh, that's the best uh, setup that I've come up with. I've been running a lot of uh, tests on the test stand. Uh, the RC Benchmark test stand and getting my efficiencies and my thrust. And then um, I am a motor testing, a prop testing could be a whole, whole video on its own. There's a lot of nuances. Fairly simple to do for vertical testing, but when the plane starts moving forward and you start moving at speed, things change. And uh, that's hard to do with a test stand, although I have managed to mock it up with a, a motor in front of it, blowing an airstream over the motor. Um, and a little more accurately, I've got, I mounted my test stand uh, on a tall post in the back of my truck. Had a friend drive my truck uh, with a cruise control at a certain speed and run the tests, uh, different motors, different propellers, and um, giving me an idea of how they're going to perform at cruise speed. All right, well, I'll give you, give you guys a quick demonstration of, uh, of this working. I've got it, I've got all the wires hooked up to a servo here, and I'm just running the tilt right now off a knob on my radio. So if we rotate these up, now the nice thing about these Notice that we go over top, so we've got about 120 degrees of, of uh, rotation of throw on these, so that's really important. Now, in a standard multi rotor, um, you know, yaw is controlled by you know increasing and decreasing the thrust on the opposite side so that you get to take, a, take uh, advantage of the motor torque to actually torque 
the craft around. Um, in VTOLs, yaw is notoriously weak. Um, the control, yaw control, is, is really a weak control. Um, it has a lot to do with, you know, the size of the motors and props, the, the amount of torque that we're generating on these motors compared to the overall size of the aircraft. On a small race quad, you know, you've got a lot of torque, usually high pitch props, um, and it's pretty closely, um, pretty close to the center line. There's a lot of power and they can really yaw themselves around, but a VTOLs, tend to have problems in that. Plus we've got bigger structures getting caught in the wind, uh, weather veining where the wind kind of dictates which way you're pointing more than your props are. So one thing that we can do uh, in a setup like this is we can use what's called vectored thrust or vectored yaw. And instead of just using the motors um, and speeding them up to, to take advantage of the torque, we can actually use the angle of the motor. And if we come over top, we can uh, use these motors in sync to actually generate a vectored thrust that will uh, give us better yaw control. So um, that's one thing that's nice. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned before, I'm running Ardu Pilot on this, and Ardu Pilot has great support for uh, different types of VTOLs, quad planes, uh, things like that. Um, and one of the features that they have is this vectored yaw control. So we can move these motors, you know, ahead and behind center as we need to um, so that we can generate better yaw, uh, yaw direction. These motors will all be hooked up um, and the, the, they will be um, hooked up separately so not only will the motors be hooked up separately, but the, uh, the actual yaw control um, will be able to, uh, the uh, rotation control will be separate as well. So I'll be using up a lot of channels. I think I figured I need um, 12 channels uh, on the servo to get everything working. So that's um, four servos for the controls, four servos, for the motor tilt, and the four motors. So 12 channels, and we'll be using uh, everything on, uh, on the flight controller for this. This test was performed at storage voltage on the battery, and the goal was to get to uh, one kilogram of thrust at 50% throttle. All right, so uh, to give you an update of where we are with the overall project, um, you saw the front wing. And uh, the front wing is pretty much done and ready to go. The rear wing, the, um, the, halves, the halves are done. The honeycomb is in and they are ready uh, for their internal structure. So these are all the bits and bobs. Uh, this is the main shear web. And then the individual ribs, these have all been cut out of the three millimeter um, fiberglass honeycomb panels. So those are ready to go. In fact, uh, this weekend I'll be gluing up the wing with the internal structure. So those will be ready to go, uh, ready to start fitting the motor pods or the nacelles probably next week. These are the molds for the fuselage. So fuselage molds are done, they're primed, and the first layer of glass is in them. And I have designed the internal structure, honeycomb uh, ribs to go in this. And those are just getting ready to be cut.
And let's see, so there's the honeycomb panel that I glued up that the, uh, that the structure for the rear wing and the fuselage is going to be cut out of. So making some pretty good progress there. These are, um, these are little printed brackets and these are going, sorry, I'm not very well prepared here. Okay, these are, okay, so these are printed brackets that are going to be glued inside this wing and they are going to be the anchor supports for the vertical stab. So when this top piece is, is glued on, I'll be able to slide the two little holes in them at the right angle to match up with these, and they'll be getting a carbon fiber tubes. We'll get mounted in the vertical stab and then go through the top of the rear wing and mount into these holes in the bracket that's glued uh, inside this wing uh, with the rest of the wing structure. So that, my vertical stabs will sit back here. So all in all, good progress. Um, thinking probably another week or so, and I should have all of the uh, fiberglass components made and uh, glued together, and it's uh, onto the wiring. All right, so. Um, these are really the last pieces uh, that need to be done. Uh, the one, one last piece I do have to make is the uh, lid that covers the fuselage. And uh, I have that all done up and I'm thinking I might do um, a start to finish video uh, just on that. Uh, going through the design process, the, the milling, I'm going to mill the plug making of the plug, making of the mold from the plug, and then the layup of the part. So I was thinking that might be a nice start to finish video. So uh, um, if you guys uh, would like to see that, let me know in the comments and I will go ahead and put that in. I guess that's about it for this, uh, this video and this update. So I will catch you guys on the next one. anyways that it needs the strength hello it's uh, on to the wire hey enough So, um, making pretty good progress. Should have... Oh, fucking dog. Shut up! <laughs>